I'd like to introduce you to a couple of friends of mine. This is John Jacob Heimerschmidt. Now, he's uh, he was a lorry driver. He travelled all around Europe, and he's currently writing a novel based upon his experiences there. It's entitled My Time on the Wrong Side of the Road, and it's probably going to be a great hit. And this, this is his uh, ever-loving partner, Kitty Webb. Now, Kitty is uh, a, an ironsmith. She... Uh, she bends iron into interesting shapes, makes wonderful sculptures by glaring at it until it melts and uh, then forms itself naturally. And uh, they've been living with their parents and they've decided that it's time for them to move uh, into a house together. And, you know, looking at their budget, they had about 40,000 simoleons, which, um, let's be honest with you, is not enough for a, a nice big house these days. So. What they've done is they, they've decided to b build for themselves a bungalow. Now, a bungalow is... I haven't run into this in a, um, Americans, and I should imagine some people who are not uh, British would know the term. A bungalow is basically a one-story house. It's, it was originally designed for um, retired people. You know, people who uh, perhaps were a little bit too uh, weak of the knee to climb up the stairs regularly, so... It's a, it's a house that's on a slightly larger plot of land than the normal English house is, and uh, it comes in one story. Now, these places were traditionally cheaper than the, 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 the houses of the, the estates in which they were built in, and as a, the, you know, they were priced for people to live in. But as houses have got really, really expensive in the United Kingdom over the years, what's happened is that these houses have become incredibly popular amongst uh, young couples, people buying first houses because, you know, of course they're cheaper. Uh, which is the reason why um, John and uh, Kitty are looking to buy one. Now, as I said, they have about 40000 to spend. And, um, yeah, this should be enough to buy a, a reasonably nice bungalow. So this is what we're going to start putting together. I will stick a picture of what a bungalow generally looks like in, in the corner, if I remember. I hope I do. And that's, this is the sort of thing we're going to build. Now, the problem, of course, with a bungalow is it's a little bit small if you want to have you know, a couple of offices or workshops like these guys do or you know, have children because you know, there's, there's not so much in the way of bedrooms in. So uh, what we generally do is um, do a loft conversion. They turn the loft into another room, and that's uh, you know, pretty much what we're working on here. So this is going to be a two-story house that we built out of what was originally a one-story house so that the upper floor is smaller than the, the, the lower floor because to take into account the fact that it's actually part of the roof, which is uh, you know, what we're working on here now. So there, finally, we have something of an approximation of the roof. I, I didn't do anything about the slight discoloring. Um, as you can see here, I'm trying to put the roof back on. It doesn't seem to be making any difference. So just in the end, I just give up. And I think I'm not going to be looking at it, so who particularly cares? And uh, what we're going to do now is start laying out the rooms. I hope oh, I'm going to put the windows in. Of course we are. That's obviously the first thing you do. Now, of course, me and Windows and The Sims 4, we just don't really get on. It seems that most of them are designed for putting into... Um, odd numbered widths and it's ever so easy to build an even numbered room. I never make this mistake in Minecraft. I I always make sure that I'm making an odd numbered sized room but I always seem to make the mistake in The Sims. But uh, we get going on this so we get some stairs in there we go lay that out and this gives us a chance to put the uh, the, the upstairs corridor. We're going to put some some bedrooms in here and there we go, laid it out. There should be a bathroom up here as well. Now, let me talk a little bit about the challenge. The challenge is to make a three-bedroomed house fully furnished with uh, a 40,000 simoleon budget. And this is what we're aiming for here. Uh, it was uh, This was originally challenged to me by uh, Exim Sugar months and months and months ago. In fact, when I was still living in America. And I did do the uh, I did do this recording then, and it's been sitting on my hard disk, and it's travelled all around the world, and that waiting for me to take the time to do the narration. And I, I, I one reason or other, totally forgot. And uh, yeah, so uh, sorry this is so late, and thank you once again, Laura, for uh, giving me the chance to do this, giving me the challenge, because I wouldn't have thought to do it otherwise. I mean, it'd been something silly involving Damien. Normally the case, and uh, 
So here I am trying to get the windows right. Of course, putting the uh, the, the little roof on that that little sticky outy bit, of course, of course, has made that harder. I'm not going to back up and um, get rid of it because I like the little sticky outy bit. It's just I'm just going to have to live with it. So there we go. Putting a, 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 a banister railing so that people can't just sleepwalk and fall down the stairs. And this, of course, takes a lot of work because, hey, it's The Sims 4. You can't just draw these things now. You've got to make little rooms for them and apply them that way. Which Do I sound bitter? Yeah, I probably do. There's good reasons for it, to be honest with you. But here we go. We're going downstairs now. We're just laying the rooms out. This is going to be quite simple, to be honest with you. I don't want to put much room in here. Okay? We're going to have a, a, a walk-in living room. And then um, to either side of the stairs, we have the kitchen and uh, a full bathroom. And a little bit off to the side, it's going to be one of the bedrooms. And I'm not going to do it out as a bedroom. This is going to be uh, Kitty's workroom. So it'll actually be laid out as um, uh, a classroom. But it's a bedroom. We'll call it a bedroom. It's the only way to meet the requirements, so we're going to call it a bedroom. Uh, so there we are. That's that's that one. And I put decide on red brick for the outside. The red brick is a little bit too dark for my taste, but it was the closest one I found that I really liked. Uh, because of course this is the British house, and British houses are made out of red brick. So what do you expect? Of course I'm going to do red brick, and I, I do actually think it goes quite nicely. I'd like to lighter red, but you can't have it. So now, the most important room in the house, the bathroom, or the shower room as the case may be here. So uh, just sticking in a shower, toilet, sink, um, I like, I've got to be honest with you, I really like that, uh, that, um, that sink there. And I keep on trying to put it in the bills, but it doesn't really seem to go with anything else. But. Uh, um, I've, I've just been running through a sort of 70s building kick at this point, so I just turned the whole sort of the whole thing into uh, um, this horrible 70s green colour and start doing the design around that. And I'm, I'm starting to really enjoy it, to be honest with you. So yes, this sort of horror is going to be what happens in this one, I'm afraid. It's a funny thing that English people say that one, isn't it? I'm afraid. Yeah. I've, I've no I've, I've no idea when the bus is going to come next. I'm afraid. It just doesn't seem right somehow, does it? Never mind. Moving swiftly onwards. I I have a I have a nasty habit with this, and, and to be honest with you, this almost broke this build because most people, most sensible people, will start decorating the inside of the house and then move to the outside, but. I actually, I really wanted to do something really British for this place, and being doing really British means putting a lot of work into the front garden. So I started concentrating on this, and as you can see here, I'm, I'm putting a little. Uh, I start by putting in um, a little walkway in with a, a solid side um, because. It's very hard to paint diagonally with these tools and actually give a good impression. There's no solid, um, solid line there. So uh, putting a little fence in there um, just help divide the, the room up and just give a sharpness to the division between path and um, and grass, which I quite liked. And uh, yeah, I'm just putting a little bit of decoration in here. But after a little, I'm going to start panicking when I'm realising I'm spending all the money on the outside and I'm probably not going to have enough to put a, 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 uh, an oven in the inside. So we're, we're going to see that happen in just a minute, I should imagine, because you know, I'm, I'm pretty done when it comes to things like that. But still, let's get lots of pretties in the garden because an Englishman's house has to look pretty in the garden, if it's got a garden. <sighs> Yeah, one of the things I can never really uh, appreciate myself. I don't really much have a gr much of a green finger when it comes to front gardens, but uh, if you're going to do it British, you've got to do it well. So, right, I've decided I've spent enough on the front garden. I'm totally going to ignore the back for a while, but I'm going to start getting some of this uh, this house designed. And of course, the first thing we need to do is get some lights in, and the Sims. To be totally honest, I'm not just too keen on the lights in The Sims 4, which is one of the reasons why what I've done is basically just stuck the cheapest light in each room. 
it's essentially a really good light. It illuminates very well and it gives a lot of uh, definition to the stuff underneath it. I'll probably change most of them, but uh, for now, it's uh, it's making it easier to see, and especially that one I've just cut in half. So, I'm thinking about it, I quite like that look. I'm going to have to do that one day now, so it looks like I'm... They've got little half semicircle lights sticking out of each wall. So, uh, initial wallpaper ideas. And I think that's perhaps a little bit old and formal, but I do like that colour. It works pretty well, especially when I start putting in some bright, bold, young looking colours. And I initially thought I'd have the TV room over this corner, and, you know, it's. It's pretty much how I always do these ones, where you know, sort of the the the, the TV in the middle of the room, and the, uh, the the chairs up against the wall. One of the reasons was I wanted to block off where those uh, those plants are clipping through the wall. But as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm getting more and more uncomfortable with the idea, mostly because with this in place here, I'm starting to run out of ideas what to do over the other side. I mean, it does look good. Uh, right up to the point where I start trying to put carpets down in the mid in the middle and I think gets a bit grumpy about the whole thing. And it's this as well as the fact that I'm you know, basically just putting most of the furnishing in one corner here that's made me start thinking, no, let's not do this one. And uh, after this, I, I just decide to move, just, just basically flip the idea on its head and put the chairs in the middle of the room and the TV against the wall, which is... Uh, what I'm going to do here in a minute. I try initially with the idea of putting some uh, a dining room there, but again, it feels too old-fashioned for the the young people I'm dealing with here. So yeah, TV against the wall. I I start putting these uh, things on the side of it, and then I start realizing just how much these things cost. So instead, uh, stick some bookshelves there and there, and. Well, that becomes a bit of a painful thing as well, because I suddenly realise how much those things cost as well, which is, you know, not surprising. Seems to have got some first edition, you know, Shakespeare's Lost Folio and uh, a 350-year-old alarm clock. So I start trying a few different ideas, and I think, I think I've come to the conclusion that most of them are horrible and tacky and move on. But uh, I do quite like that particular table, which looks a bit better than those battered ones. So that, that one... That one I think ends up my final choice. Stick a bookend at either end, which uh, is quite ironic, really. And the whole thing ties in together, which uh, I, I find quite pleasant. And also moving these chairs across to the middle here. And all of a sudden you have a nicely filled room, and I'm quite happy about this fact. So, sofa, love seat, uh, little table in the corner there for you know putting a cup of coffee on and I'll put some ornaments on there as well and all of a sudden that room fills up quite nicely and then I come to the entranceway which to me is a very important part of the, the, the building um, so you know what I want here is I want um, play I want the coats I want the shoes I want uh, you know, do they wear hats? Do they carry uh, um, a backpack with them when they go out? If they do, it's going to be dropped here. Um, I don't know where I get the idea of the student's hat, and I think that's actually uh, a wardrobe I was pushing there for a second. I don't, I don't quite like these, and I'd love some custom content for that, but I couldn't find any. But it still, it still fills up that corner the way I want it to. You know, sort of. Uh, the, this is where you put your coat. This is where you put your wet shoes when you come in. Um, that's 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 starting to look realistic to me. Stick fire over the other side. Don't like that. Um, and at this point, I'm really at a loss what to do with this side. I've already decided not to do a uh, a dining room because, yeah, again, you know, a young couple with a dining room it just doesn't seem right. And I'm, I'm still struggling for inspiration, so I distract myself by putting lots of stuff on this table here because let's face it if uh, if you if you're John and Kitty sitting on a Sunday afternoon watching Robot Wars you're going to have your junk here and both of them like their toys and their videos and things like that and I can I can quickly see those shelves being filled up there goes a backpack I'm, I've distracted myself from distracting myself as you can see but it's finally time I must I must deal with this third and I'm still thinking about dining rooms but Everything I try just doesn't quite feel right. And I think it's because, you know, this whole thing feels a bit too old and formal to me, to be honest with you. 
I mean, in the end, I do start going with some table designs, but it's only when I start putting things around it when it's, it starts to feel right. And again, I'm sticking things there, trying to deal with that clipping uh, issue. Uh, but it's not the tables that matter, though I do quite like those ones there. It's the junk I start putting on it that makes it uh, look right to me. And uh, to be honest with you, when I eventually get a bit further into this, I'm really starting to enjoy this and um, get some uh, some stuff on there. Just little junky bits and pieces, like the teddy bear there, and you know um, John's toys, toy cars from when he was eight years old, and things like that. And then I, I start thinking about you know just putting some some posters up in here, like a teenager's room, and. Uh, just stick some simple bright things up in the corner to break the boring old-fashioned architecture and once I've done that it really starts to come alive and I'm, I'm quite happy with this particular now. So of course move on. So this room is going to be kitchen. I think it's a little bit too small for what I usually like but I th in the end it turns out all right to be totally honest with you there's, there's enough space here to put all the stuff and it's not a kitchen dining room people aren't going to be eating their breakfast in there they're going to come back through to the living room so in all honesty there's plenty enough space here and of course the first thing I need to do here is get the uh, the design right and I decided to distract myself again by going out and re decorating a few other rooms which as you, as you do and uh, the upstairs la uh, uh, ah yes that's right the the the, uh, the the windows were a little bit too low in the kitchen so I come back in there and I stick yeah, just the, the basic layout of stuff here so they got this nice simple kitchen area it's going to be a bit cheap but uh, yeah once again there a young couple just moved in so it doesn't have to be exceptional it just has to be functional so I think I get I have no idea why I did that but never mind I just obviously thought oh yes that'll go well so here we go start laying out the, the kitchen we got all the basics here now we've got the uh, the, the 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 fridge the sink and the cooker i would have liked to put a, a dishwasher in to be honest with you but i seem to be running out of uh, running a little bit low on money at this point yeah there's only eleven thousand left so i think i steer away from that now in favor of course putting some junk in to make the place look homely i, I would yeah I, i've never lived in a place where you've hung the frying pans on the wall i love that to be to be honest with you it would just make life so much easier uh, admittedly, you'd have to keep on washing the ones that you hardly ever use because they're getting horrible and sticky, but uh, it still worked quite well. Um, yeah, I put that uh, that plate cabinet in the corner there, and I was, when I was looking, I was thinking, you know, that's something that was in this house when they moved in, and they never bothered getting rid of it. <laughs> and, and once I thought about it that way, I really started quite liking it. And uh, yeah, some 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 cupboards there to put the baked bean tins in, the fire alarm because you know. John is going to decide to cook one day and set fire to the place and uh, then move on to the bathroom and this one because you know, the downstairs was the original design the the upstairs wasn't built in this is this has got to be a full bathroom and it's because it's an older place put a full bath in there and uh, I, I'm quite liking the whole of this design here that the room is a little bit smaller than I originally wanted and when I was thinking looking at this I was thinking you know, a young couple like these, they're going to want to make a statement with this room. And the statement I thought they would they would want to do here is actually just strip the plaster off the walls and go back to the original brick. And that with the uh, the white plaster and that gave such a lovely contrast here. I was, I was really quite happy that I did that one. And you know, once I started putting some, some fixtures and fittings in here, so a shaving cabinet and mirror there, and just, yeah, a light over it to make sure that... Uh, yeah, John doesn't cut his chin off one morning while shaving and you know, just putting some little bits and pieces in the corner here, get some towels in and uh, you know, some hand towels and toilet roll. Uh, this this room just fills up and it's, it's got a life to it here that I, I'm really thinking you know, I wouldn't mind living in this house. And once I put the uh, the towels in on the shelf there, they, you know, that, that final colour is, is said, yeah, I've got to use that for the rest of the towels obviously. So I'm really quite happy with that one. So, on upstairs. 
I mean, we've, I've left one room, the craft room, and I'm probably going to get one last because, quite honestly, I don't have much of the way of inspiration for it. But, uh, yeah, this hallway, what I wanted to do was I wanted to do something really youthful and bright coloured and exciting. And I think that, uh, you know, that, that horrible peachy colour works really well there. And what I'm thinking here is that. Uh, what John and Kitty would really like to do here is, is just put some things, just some statements of their character here. So, you know, so see that little plant in the corner to die, but uh, most of the colours in this room are going to be very youthful and exciting. And um, so, I, I, again, I start looking at posters and things like that to put on the walls. And I'm thinking, you know, perhaps this one can be a little bit more mature. We'll put. Uh, some very youthful paintings on the walls, but uh, let's go away from the printed posters and uh, I'm play with a few different ideas here. And none of them actually seem quite right, and I actually just start to get a little bit annoyed here because yeah, this is this is just a room that people walk through. And uh, but eventually, I start finding some some colours that work. Mostly, I think the problem I had here, and you can see I've just changed it, was that colour wall was really horrible. I thought it would actually make the rest of the stuff stand out, but what it did is it just made everything contrast and wrong. But changing it to that nice yellow meant that uh, you know, sort of the, the things on the wall started working well, and it, it started looking really good. So come here to one of the bedrooms. We're going to make this a kiddies room. On the anticipation of them having a kid. Um, so just put uh, one of the bedrooms here and just laid it out like a kid's room. Simple bed, table, um, a, a desk to do some stuff on. You know, as, he, as the kid grew up, he'd get himself a, a computer and so on, and all would be good. And then move on to the master bedroom. And this one I put a little bit more effort in because, well, let's face it, it's a room that's actually going to be lived in. So, um, thinking again of the more modern stuff, I didn't want to put a wardrobe in here. So in the end, what I did is that everything just got hung up in the open. And that gave me the chance to put, you know, as you can see here, the drawers underneath. And, you know, this sort of method is, it, it defeats the object of having a wardrobe because the whole idea of a wardrobe is to stop things from getting dusty. But... To be totally honest with you, how many, how many people do keep their clothes for 15 years, well, apart from me? I'm, I'm, I've, I've got t-shirts older than my son, but that's that's another story altogether. But you know, uh, this putting all this stuff in the open, it gave a lot of definition to the room, and it opened things up, and it started to look really nice. And I'm, I'm, I'm really quite happy how this one went. Getting blinds to the windows was such an utter pain. This is something that the Sims have never got quite right, but in the end... What I did is I put lots of curtains together so it made it look like it was one curtain that went across the back and that looked quite nice. So moving on, on to, uh, this is going to be John's office, this is where he's going to be writing his magnum opus. Uh, so we're running short of money here so yeah, we're going to do this as quickly as, and simply as possible now. So cheap computer on cheap desk, little chair there, that's basically enough for him to sit there and write and the rest of the room I'm just going to fill up with junk. This is this is going to be kind of the room where the things that haven't got unpacked yet have been put so um, we're going to have boxes and things like that in the corner and it's all all going to be very you know sort of very simple and unadorned. I'd, I'd have loved to do a full-size poster there but I couldn't and again I was thinking you know this is this is John's inspiration, but still, you know, junk in the corners, and yeah, you know, the laundry basket there, and just, just, just bits and pieces to fill it out. Of course, we can't put a window in there because there's the roof on the other side. So this is this is a room that's going to always be artificially lit, and as a result, I don't think it'd make a nice bedroom to be honest with you. But there you go. And right on to the last room. This is going to be uh, Kitty's workroom. And as a result, there's not that much I can put in, which is, if you look at the money, probably a good thing. Because we've got 55 simoleon. Oh, actually, I've sold some things so and got a little bit more, but still, there's not that much I can put in here, not that much I want to put in here, to be totally honest with you. So we've had the, uh, we've got the craft bench in the corner there. There's um, uh, a chest by the side there to uh, for Kitty to put her, her, her diagrams and her work put in. Bits of junk in the corner, of course, because that sort of stuff builds up in places like this. 
and you know at this point we're getting to the point where we're pretty much done i'm just putting extra little details in corners and just padding it out with the last of the money which is let's be honest with you not that much stick a light in there of course because it wasn't lit and there you have it i hope you enjoyed this ladies and gentlemen um and we came in very very slightly under budget just putting a few knickknacks in corners and things like that just to fill it out a little bit but there you have it the house cost forty thousand it is suitable for i think you get quite a large family in here and all in all i'm quite happy with the design i've been playing the, uh, the the web family in here for a little bit and they seem quite happy with it to be totally honest with you so i hope you've enjoyed this apologies to um Exim sugar for taking forever to finish this off uh, but thank you so very very much for challenging me because i really enjoyed doing this hopefully it won't take me so long to get one out next time so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to uh, let the webs go in and see what they think. And I will say to you guys, I have been Simon Parsons. This has been The Sims 4 40K Challenge. Thank you and good night.